Hey, hope everybody's doing well, and I really wanted to make a video revisiting a rapture dream that I had. I've had multiple dreams. The Lord has brought me not only rapture dreams, but also tribulation dreams. He's brought me dreams in regards to uh, the fall of the angels and Lucifer being cast down to earth. But I really wanted to revisit this rapture dream because the time is short. And those with eyes to see and ears to hear need to understand that we are living in the last days. That we are living at the very end of time. You must, you must prepare yourself. You must sanctify, live a sanctified life. You have to repent. You have to completely commit your life to Jesus Christ. Please, listen to this dream that I had. And I hope and pray that not only will it touch your heart, but also change your mind in regards to the rapture. This was a life-altering dream that the Lord gave me. So I'll go ahead and get into it. So... Uh, how the dream essentially began. I was walking down a street. It was an ordinary, uh, beautiful day. And I've always felt that it was sometime in the spring or early summer. That's just what I felt. I can't put my finger out, but that's just what I felt. As I was walking down the street, I noticed there was a, a young boy riding his bicycle. He must have been eight or nine years old. You know, I don't know, probably about... I don't know, 60, 80 feet away from me. When I approached the front of this home, there was a massive uh, oak tree. It's one of those oak trees that the, you know, the trunk is like many feet thick and the canopy is just huge and actually hangs over part of the house and covers the entire front yard and hangs over actually out into the street. When I got to that house, there was just a massive shaking and a, a, a violent shaking. And then from that violent shaking, that entire oak tree got uprooted and thrown aside probably 50 feet. Right when that happened, there was a, a massive hole that was left in the ground where the root bulb was from that tree. And there was... Uh, hundreds of birds in the tree. So when the tree got uprooted, the birds actually flew out of the tree. And just to add detail, when where the tree was, where the root bulb was, the hole, the massive hole that was left behind, I felt that there was something evil, something sinister, something bad that was going to come out of that hole. Right then. I heard the most massive, incredible sound I've ever heard in my entire life. Something that's unworldly. It was a massive blast, a massive trumpet sound. Obviously, it was a sound of a shofar, but it was something more. There was multiple sounds inlaid and intertwined within the sound, and I can't even describe it. It's, it's undescribable, the sound that was blown. The massive call, and it was so powerful, so majestic, and so loud that it felt like, and it looked like, or it felt like it came from every direction. Right then, time stopped. Right when that trumpet, shofar, and sound blasted, it was intense, and time stopped. All of the birds that were in the tree that flew up in the air after they came out of the tree, stopped and suspended anim animation right then and just were stopped in the air. And as that trump was blasting, I just raised my hands into the sky and I just started to praise our Lord and Savior Jesus saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I began to get lifted off the ground. And when I get lifted off the ground, I kind of, I noticed when I was kind of just barely glancing over, I saw the young boy being lifted off the, off his bicycle. He was getting taken up into the air as well. And so as I went up into the air, 
I noticed that way off in the distance, there was a couple others being lifted into the air as well. And when I was going over the city, I noticed there was people walking their dogs or playing in the park, but everything was stopped. Time was completely stopped. And I was heading towards these beautiful mountains in the sky. And so as I approached the mountains, uh, we end, I ended up in this place. And I next found myself in this, in this hall, this, this type of uh, entrance of some type. And at that entrance, there was a table set up and there was two angelic beings behind the table. They weren't saying a word. And a line formed, and as the line formed, they were either checking the people's names off of the list or putting their people people's names on the list that, you know, as, as they were sitting behind this table. And so uh, I, I kind of was sitting there, and I, I got in line, obviously, and I went up, and without saying a word, they, again, either checked my name off a list or they put my name on a list. And then as we were getting to go up into heaven, I remember feeling in my pocket, I had these keys, and those keys were the keys to essentially my storage where I have all my firearms and ammunition. And I remember in the dream, no kidding, I remember in the dream saying to myself, oh my gosh, the people, those who were left behind are going to need those, going to need those keys. Again, for all the ammunition and firearms I have in that storage. Now, I don't know why that came to mind. I completely believe that the Lord orchestrated this. And so, as we were preparing, we were, we were uh, exiting and heading up into heaven, and then I woke up. And it was absolutely life-altering. Now, I just barely breezed over that rapture dream. And I ask you, please go back through my videos the, the extremely detailed version of that rapture dream is in there. But one thing I wanted to get across and make sure that you understand is that the rapture is real. The rapture is in the Word of God. And also the rapture, the harpazo, the catching away, is very, very soon. One of the things that was very profound to me in the dream is there were so few people. There was not millions of people like you would expect. Now, I'm sure that this event was going on all over the world. I'm just talking about where I was at, the location where I was at, what happened and what took place. There was very few. I was sad, but simultaneously rejoicing. I was sad for the, to see so few people, but rejoicing that I, that I was there. So please listen to me. If you're within the sound of my voice, Jesus Christ is coming soon to remove those who truly love him, those who truly follow him, those who are truly waiting for him. The wise virgin with her lamp full of oil, with her wicks trimmed, ready, always prepared and waiting, seeking and searching for her bridegroom. I ask, please, today, do not take this message lightly. Like I said before, there was very few. There was very few that went. I believe that this is a warning. I, I just ask for those listening to check your heart. Check your heart of hearts. Have you been living a sanctified life or have you been embracing the world? Have you been seeking worldly things or have you been seeking heavenly things? Have you been pursuing Jesus Christ or have you been pursuing things of this world? Have you been store, storing up treasures here on this world or have you been storing up treasures in heaven? Now listen, I totally understand that nobody is perfect. I am not perfect. I am not perfect. My heart longs, though, though, though. My heart longs to see my Savior. If I mess up, I am heartbroken. If, if I do something that is uh, against His Word, be, you know, for whatever reason, out of uh, just, you know, a, a, a lash out of anger or just a lustful thought, whatever it is, 
I'm heartbroken for those things. And just as Paul says in the scripture, you know, I, I don't do the things I want to do, but I do the things I don't want to do. And I can attest to that. But thank you, Lord Jesus, for the beautiful gift of grace that you have not only extended to me, but to everybody who truly wants you in their life, that truly believes, truly trusts you, and is truly following you. I ask you, please, to hear the sound of my voice. Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. And again, if you want more details of this dream, you can go back through my videos. But time is short. We are living in the last seconds of eternity. Once a rapture happens, once that trumpet sounds, it'll be too late. You'll be shut out into the outer courts where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The sorrow, the anguish, the heartache of not going when the Lord called you because you were either too tied up in the world or you just flat out didn't believe. Now, obviously, during the tribulation, you can be saved. But look how hard it is right now with the Holy Spirit here. When the Holy Spirit is removed, how much harder will it be? Also, all of the bold judgments that are going to come upon the earth, all the cataclysms that are going to come upon the earth. If you die in a cataclysm outside of Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. That is just the truth and the bottom line. If you reject Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. If you, during the tribulation, all the persecutions are going to happen. They're probably going to outlaw Bibles. They're probably going to remove videos like this off of YouTube. We don't know what's going to happen, but we can see and read Scripture, and it's going to be bad. It says it's going to be the worst time throughout human history. If you die in the tribulation without Jesus Christ, without suffering for Him, without without being potentially a martyr for him, because you can not you can be saved, you can. Now, it does say in Scripture that more than likely you're going to have to be martyred by beheading, by not accepting the mark of the beast. So for somehow, some reason, if you're watching this and the tribulation is going on, you will know, trust me, you will know. You cannot take any type of mark. The stuff they're trying to give you right now, the stuff, the the injections are trying to give you the liquid they're trying to give you into your body you cannot take it at all do not take it please hear these words do not take it jesus christ is the only way into heaven jesus christ is the only way to live forever do not believe the lie that they're going to be telling you they're probably going to say that aliens took uh, a lot of people that is not true Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, came and removed those who have been seeking Him, searching for Him, and waiting for Him. Please, I ask you today, repent. You must repent. Don't believe in the lie that, you, you, that, you, that you're not supposed to repent, or, or, or repentance is, is not, you don't have to. Trust me, you need to repent. You have to. Please, people, I'm begging you. Our time is so short. Jesus Christ is at the door. He is knocking. Will you answer the door? Will you open it for him or will you reject him? Do not take the light of the enemy, but accept the light of Jesus Christ. Do not let the light of the enemy extinguish the light of Jesus Christ in your life. Do not take anything into your body at all, period. Please hear these words. The rapture, the catching away, the harpazo will happen very soon. It'll happen in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. It'll be too late to wait till the last second. Don't wait any longer. Please, trust and completely believe and completely commit your life to Jesus Christ continuously. Trust and believe that he died on the cross to take away your sins. Repent and ask him to remove your sins. Trust and believe and follow him wholeheartedly, completely, without wavering, without ceasing. Do not deny him. Jesus says, if you deny me before man, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. Jesus Christ is the only way into heaven. I hope this message finds you well. It is in the name of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, guys. Have a blessed day. Please hear these words. We're almost going home. Bye-bye.